Now at 10, a Columbia Heights school board member stands his ground. Tonight, Grant Nichols resists calls to resign over what his critics call a racist Facebook post. Plus the evidence that shows what a Glenwood father did before he murdered his family and then killed himself. And the Pope makes history with his arrival in the United States. Thanks for joining us tonight. We start with some tense moments at the Columbia Heights School Board meeting. For the second straight week, teachers, students, and parents called for the resignation of member Grant Nichols. But unlike last week, Nichols faced the crowd that called his controversial Facebook post disgusting. John Croman is live with his defiant stand tonight. Hey, John. Well, you know, they've been here three hours, and so far Grant Nichols hasn't said anything except for the Pledge of Allegiance, with whichever everybody else took. Uh, they've spent most of the night on public comments, letting people sound off about Grant Nichols and to Grant Nichols, looking at the embattled uh, uh, school board member right in the eye and asking him to resign for the good of the district. Uh, Nichols uh, was greeted today by protesters who you know, st started outdoors and then took their chance indoors before the meeting started. He said on Facebook uh, Saturday that he would not resign regardless of what anybody on the board and in the district said. He continues to maintain that someone else took his phone and posted the anti-Muslim uh, remark without his permission. Those who spoke out tonight clearly didn't buy that. You speak in, on behalf of everybody, not just yourself. These are kids, and you took away their defenses. You betrayed the mission statement, and you disgust me. And unfortunately, that student body doesn't want you to lead them. This community doesn't want you to lead them. The rest of your board members don't want you to be here. And honestly, safety had nothing to do with it. Here at Heights, we value everyone's safety, and no one in the building would do anything or let anything happen to you. Yeah. Earlier in the evening, uh, a, about three dozen members of the local uh, school board, uh, sorry, the local teachers union, marched from one of the elementary schools up the hill toward district headquarters. Uh, they wanted uh, to be seen. They actually put up some flyers or banners over Central Avenue under the pedestrian bridge here on, uh, on uh, 49th Avenue North and eventually made their way over to the school board meeting and they're all sitting there right now watching the action again. Uh, they're right now just getting to the part of the agenda where they're going to start talking about a resolution that uh, would would basically be a resolution calling for Nichols to resign. But he has once again, he has said he is not going to resign. He says the 2,800 people voted for him uh, to be a member of the school board. And uh, those people should also have a voice, not just those who are here tonight speaking against him. Back to you. So, John, just two quick questions. Could there be another vote where they could just vote him off the school board, or is that just a one-shot deal and now it's over? And second, what was his reaction when people were looking at him directly and saying these things to him that he was not wanted? Well, I'll answer your second question first. Uh, they, he was very calm, very calm demeanor. Um, he looked interested. He, he listened politely. Uh, that, that was, sometimes he looked down and took notes, but pretty much just, you know, just sat, sat there and took it all. Um, as far as the question about could there be another vote, there are only five members on the board right now. It takes four votes uh, to remove somebody with, you know, involuntarily. And he's one vote. And Ted Landwer, who stood with him last week, is the other vote. So that leaves only three votes. And those same three people may vote tonight to ask him to resign, uh, but but they won't uh, they won't be successful trying a vote uh, to try to get him uh, just ousted from the board. All Back right. to you. Thanks so much, John. All right. Well, court records are revealing new insights into the murder-suicide of a family living on the shores of Lake Minnetonka. But while many questions now have answers, the motive behind the crime remains a mystery. Jay Olstead breaks down the evidence of the deadly discovery. In this 19-page search warrant, investigators provide more detail about what led up to Brian Short killing his wife and their three teenage children at their home on Lake Minnetonka. Inside the pages, investigators say Short bought a shotgun at Gander Mountain in Eden Prairie Sunday, September 6, just a day or two before the medical examiner believes he used that gun to shoot and kill his family and then himself. Police say one of Short's co-workers became worried and called police to check on the family. That employee had access to Short's email account and, according to police, discovered a message from the children's school indicating they had missed the first two days of classes. 
That employee also told police that Short was stressed because his business was not going well. His online company, AllNurses.com, was facing a defamation lawsuit from another company. But what if any role that played is unclear? At the family's funeral this past weekend, his brother-in-law confirmed Short was going through some difficult times. But deep down there's a storm brewing. Not one you can see or hear. Business was slow. Business faced challenges Brian was not used to having. The once lovable goofball that everybody knew and loved was now fighting depression and anxiety. The search warrant also reveals all five family members were shot in the head and found in or near their bedrooms, except for Short, who was found in the garage. Investigators located Short's cell phone and two computers in the home, one of which controlled an exterior camera system. What's not in this search warrant is a motive. Investigators didn't find a suicide note or letter inside the home indicating why a father and husband would kill his own family. In Greenwood, Jay Olstead, Carol of the News. The investigation is not complete. Police are requesting a search warrant for Gander Mountain as well. An 18-year-old Robbinsdale woman who was shot by an officer in April pleaded guilty today to second-degree assault. Tania Harris admitted to running at the officer with a knife in her hand during a fight with another woman. Her plea came just minutes before jury selection was set to start in her trial. A sentencing date has not been set. A settlement has been reached in a case involving a Mendota Heights police officer who was shot and killed during a traffic stop. Officer Scott Patrick sued the city a few months before he was killed last year. In the suit, Patrick claimed whistleblower and workplace retaliation. As part of the settlement, city officials and Patrick's wife will come up with ways to remember and honor him. There's a, a painting that we know the city has of Officer Patrick, and we've asked that be displayed. Um, and then even the establishment of some type of physical memorial. The city tells CARE 11 the case was settled for $50,000, which will be divided between Patrick's widow and her attorneys. Tomorrow marks the first of several busy days for Pope Francis as he tours the United States for the very first time. The pontiff is expected to urge America to set aside differences, care for the environment and the poor, and embrace religious liberty and immigrants. His mission follows his warm welcome at Andrews Air Force Base earlier today, an occasion marked with the ringing of the bells at the Basilica of St. Mary in Minneapolis. Tomorrow morning, the Pope will meet with President Obama at the White House. After that, the pontiff will hold a midday prayer session with U.S. bishops in D.C. Then he will hold a mass in the afternoon. Twelve St. Paul seminarians and two priests will be there to see it all happen firsthand. Happening now, delays on I-94 westbound between Maple Grove and St. Michael. Traffic was reduced to just one lane at 8 o'clock tonight. And right now, drivers between Rogers and St. Michael are being detoured off of 94 and onto the exit ramp at Highway 241 so crews can resurface temporary pavement, which failed several times this summer. Well, tonight, the biggest game of the year for the Minnesota Lynx. A win against the Sparks means they advance in the playoffs. A loss means the season is over. Sports Director Eric Perkins joins us now with the latest. Hey, Perk. Yeah, the winner will advance to play Phoenix in the Western Conference Finals. And while we don't know who it's going to be quite yet, things are looking favorable here for Minnesota. Lynx hosting the L.A. Sparks tonight. Second quarter, Lynx up eight. Lindsey Whalen, Tamaya Moore, scores on the acrobatic layup. Gets the target center rocking tonight. Great crowd there this evening. Third quarter, Simone Augustus finding the open lane, driving to the hoop for the bucket. And the Lynx go up by eight. Later, it's Moore again. She drains the jumper from the free throw line. And right now, the Lynx lead by a half dozen with a, just about a minute to play. Lynx have won eight straight playoff games on their home floor. We'll see if they can make it nine. And we'll check in live with Dave Schwartz a little bit later in sports. All right, thanks, Perk. Still ahead of 10, flying high over the Twin Cities. Tonight, a unique look at Minneapolis from 249 miles above Earth. Plus, the boys of summer fulfill a wish for a Twin Cities teenager who spent his summer battling cancer. Belle? And in weather, in five hours, autumn arrives. Let's take a look at how we are, how we were today for our last full official day of summer. Not too bad. 74 here, 79 in Marshall. And this is what your Wednesday looks like. Autumn arrives, and so does the rain 
and thunderstorms. We'll have the forecast through a sunny weekend coming up in a couple of minutes. This little GoPro camera has quite a story to share. I said, honey, I just lost the GoPro. The secrets it revealed next in the land of 10,000 stories. When a North Branch father lost his video camera, precious family memories went with it. But little did he know that lost camera would capture some pretty impressive moments on its own. Boyd Hoopert takes us to the North Shore in tonight's Land of 10,000 Stories. Minnesota's Temperance River may be the prettiest place you could find to tell a story about something lost. I said, honey, I just lost the GoPro. It begins. What? with Kyle Pilston yep. and his daring family. One. This is my sister. <laughs> On their annual outing to and into the Temperance River. This is my dad. The daring photographer is Kyle himself, all shot with that GoPro camera strapped on Kyle's head. A birthday present from his wife, Kyle had treasure what are we doing? until do this it. jump two summers ago okay. with his sister Ready? in purple Ready? on the other side. One, two, three. As soon as I hit the water, I knew it came off. Caught in the current, Kyle's GoPro bounces along the river bottom, churning. As long as I could be down there holding my breath, I tried to find it and I just couldn't. For 30 minutes, Kyle's camera continued to record as it came to rest with the fishes. And he reached the conclusion any of us would. It's gone forever. I'll never see it again. The seasons changed at the Temperance River, fall to winter, spring to summer, till almost a year to the day later, when new visitors arrived. My brother and I, we, we were up at Temperance River and we had some snorkels that we had purchased. Chris Flores plucked from the river a skateboard and some construction debris before his brother reached into the water and grabbed this. It was tight. A GoPro, still dry in its waterproof case. Owning one already, his brother handed it to Chris. Were you, were you kind of excited to get a GoPro? Oh, for sure, yeah. But as Chris scanned the camera's video card, his feelings changed. <gasps> Those family videos he waved to the camera. Kyle had been shooting. This is my son Jackson. Had been discovered by a man for whom family yep. had never been more important. It's all so fleeting. We, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. One year earlier, the day after this picture was taken, Chris's four-month-old daughter, Morel, had a heart attack. My wife and the other two kids were gone, and um, so I had to give her CPR. And um, <clears throat> so she had a tumor the size of a ping pong ball in the left ventricle of her heart. Any father who's been through that yeah. Wanna do it again? understands the importance Ready? of family videos. You want to get in? This kind of footage is irreplaceable. Which is where Kyle's job enters the picture. That's how he found it. I'll stay here. That same video card pulled from beneath the river also contains SWAT team training video shot by Sergeant Kyle Pilston. So this is just some room clearing. So I just zoomed in on the patch. Saw that said Chisago County. That was some good sleuthing. Yeah, maybe they should hire me. Maybe we should hire him. I'll take a job at the police department. So impressed was Kyle. It's a testament to his character. He told Chris to send him the video card and keep the camera which should come in handy. Good, Daddy. With that healthy little girl about to celebrate her second birthday. Can you say hi? Hi. Two, three. One year from sinking feeling to uplift you. Oh yeah, I'm totally glad it happened now. It's an awesome story. An awesome story from a beautiful place that still hi. isn't done. Definitely gonna be in some GoPro videos. She's the one that'll be jumping off the cliff. Boyd Hoopert, Carol Evan News, on the Temperance River.
Kyle and Chris have never met, though both profess great respect for the other. Kyle has purchased a new GoPro to replace the one that Chris now has. You'll be glad to know he's also purchased a flotation device for his camera. Wow, what a small world, huh? Just such a cool Crazy. story. I mean, there's so many twists and turns. I know, and stories. as only Boyd can weave it together and reveal. We all see these things before they're on the air. I don't know yeah. if folks yeah. realize that because it's, we watch it with you because we want to, and yeah. uh, because sometimes they're not done until moments before yeah. too. So, wow, great wow. guys, phenomenal story. story, and what a beautiful river, Temperance. Ooh, is that pretty? I've had a chance to be on that a few times. It's just a great river, and another great place is Gull Lake. Look mm -hmm. at this picture. This was taken tonight. This is taken by Judy oh, McAfee, wow. and she wanted to say farewell to summer. And uh, there it is right there, just a gorgeous shot. So I asked her what her favorite memory of summer was, and she said it was Labor Day weekend, and they had a big shrimp and crab boil up there for her <laughs> entire family, and they have been on that beautiful lake for eight years. I posted all of her photos, a bunch of them, in fact, on Facebook tonight, and asked you what your favorite summer memory was, and a ton of people are uh, letting me know, sharing pictures as well. So I really appreciate it. It's been fun to look back, very nostalgic a little bit tearful just thinking about how wonderful summer was. Of course, we're closing it out tonight, but go ahead and look at those comments and maybe post your own. I'd love to see it on my Facebook page. Here we go. This is what's going to happen as we roll through the next few hours and head into autumn. We do have a little bit of light rain up at Gull Lake and also on the Temperance River. The Temperance River is right here in the central portion of the North Shore. And oh, if you have a chance, make sure when you're going over all those rivers, when you see the Temperance River sign, Make sure, you, make sure you stop. There is a beautiful overlook that's just beyond uh, the main road there, and it is just a gorgeous spot. Also, of course, Gull Lake tonight, seeing a couple of spotty showers. Well, what's happening in the rest of the country is what's going to be happening here starting tomorrow morning. We have rain from basically southwestern Minnesota all the way down to Albuquerque tonight, and all of that moisture is on its way here. So it's going to rain for a couple of days. Tomorrow off and on, as you can see, here's the showers and thunderstorms at 9 a.m. Here is tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Another batch moves in overnight tomorrow night into Thursday morning. Here's 10 a.m. Thursday. It's going to be wet for a couple of days. That is uh, the sure sign here. And what we anticipate is that everything will clear out on Friday and the sun will reveal once again just in time for an absolutely beautiful weekend. But for tonight, as you can see, we're sitting at uh, 67 right now. We'll dip down through the mid 60s. It'll stay very mild. Maybe a clap of thunder tonight or a shower, but the best chance will be in the mid morning through the afternoon and into the overnight hours tomorrow night. So a wet beginning of autumn. Autumn begins in the 3 a.m. hour with the autumnal equinox 75, then the rain on Thursday morning. And we do expect rain to continue off and on th through Thursday afternoon, but the best chance of wet of rain will be on Thursday morning and then it will be drier in the afternoon. We do expect it to clear up on Friday. It'll be 74. And speaking of just uh, clearing up and remaining just gorgeous, we have 74 Saturday, 78 Sunday, and then 80 as we start our first full official week of autumn. Not a bad way to start it or not a bad way to end summer either this evening. What a beautiful night. So pretty. Thank you, Belle. All right. Well, this. Got a ton of buzz today. The picture was snapped and tweeted by NASA astronaut Kel Lindgren, who used to live here when he worked at HCMC. Fans noticed TCF Bank Stadium, U.S. <laughs> Bank Stadium, Target Field in the picture. Another pointed out the faint green line at the bottom of the photo where the 2011 tornado rolled through. Ooh, they got better eyes than I do, but yeah. very cool. Pretty cool pick. Well, coming up, post-game reaction from that pivotal playoff game for the Minnesota Lynx. Plus, the Twins look to get closer to that final wild card spot. Perk has the highlights next. CARE 11 Sports, from the Mayo Clinic Sports Medicine Sports Desk. All right, one series down, two to go. This playoff and championship season, the Lynx team won't be satisfied with anything but another WNBA crown. Kevin Garnett and Gary Trent in the house. I saw Andrew Wiggins was there as well, cheering on the women. Lynx up 26-14. Lindsey Whalen gets the ball, steps back, knocks down the jumper. 14 points for Way. Third quarter, Lynx up seven. Maya Moore driving to the hoop in the bucket. Team high 20 for Moore. Then in the fourth quarter, links up one. Simone Augustus from the top of the key gets the nice bounce. She has 16. Lynx pull it off 
knocking off the LA Sparks, eliminating them from the playoffs, 91 to 80. They move on to the Western Conference Finals now to face Phoenix. Now let's check in with Dave Schwartz, who's standing by courtside at Target Center. Hey, Dave. Hi. Yeah, hi, Perk. Simone Augustus here, literally just off the court. You come back, you're excited after that first game. Now you get that first series of the postseason under your belt. How does it feel to be back here again right now? Oh, it feels great. Our fans did a great job tonight, just being engaged and, uh, you know, making it tough for them, for, you know, for us to play here, for them to play here. Like, everybody was into it, and it felt great just to be out there, a playoff atmosphere. This was a hard-fought series with a team that on paper should have been easy, but you knew coming in, that this team was better than they were ranked, didn't you? Yeah, of course. Um, when they added Candace Parker back, they got Christy Tolliver back after European uh, championships, we knew that they were going to be a lot better than they were in the first half of the season. So we, we knew they were going to push us to our limits, and we appreciate that. You know, we need that for the next round uh, to get ready for Phoenix. And, um, you know, we just kind of like had our experience tonight where we all got together and we competed at a high level and we pulled out the victory. Let's talk about Phoenix. They're familiar to you from last year. You get them again. How do you feel about that? It's nice to get a good uh, crack at them again. Uh, you know, they're missing Diane Sarasi, but they're, they're still an experienced team that knows how to win. So it's going to be a great atmosphere again on Thursday. And it's, we're going to be here. It's the playoffs. It's the finals. Right. Take it home to Western Conference Finals. And the first game is at home, so you can come back down and see it. Tickets available. Simone, thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate your time as always. Lynx get a win here tonight. They're moving on to the next round to take on Phoenix. Perk, back to you. All right, Dave. Awesome. Still clawing with a dozen games left. The Twins have their own postseason aspirations tonight, kicking off a crucial series with Cleveland. Scoreless in the bottom of the third with a man on first. Aaron Higgs drives it to the gap in left center. Michael Brantley, watch this. Diving catch, except it rolls out. Escobar scores. Hicks ends up with a triple, and the Twins are in business. Next batter, Brian Dozier, sends a double to left. Bringing home Hicks, Twins score three runs in the inning, that's all Irvin Santana needs. He gives up one run on five hits and seven innings of work. Twins win three to one, staying alive in this wild card race. Oh, it's going to be a fun September. That's sports, Carol of the News, back after this. Before we go, in the midst of their wild card race, the Minnesota Twins made a fan's wish come true tonight. Sean Flourish was an honorary Twins player for the day. The 14-year-old was diagnosed with a rare bone cancer. Part of his make-a-wish included a meeting with Paul Molitor and a tour of the clubhouse. He also got to throw out the first pitch at tonight's game. Great wow. throw. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that you can't do any time else. The Twins was something he always followed. He's a diehard fan, yeah. through thick and thin. Um, and his dream was, he said, someday I'd like to be a pro baseball player. Well, very good news. Sean finished his chemo treatment and was declared cancer free earlier this month. He's also gone back to playing baseball and returned to his eighth grade class this year. Congratulations, Sean. Wow, you know, that's wisdom gained a little too soon in life, don't mm -hmm. you think? Absolutely. Oh, what a good looking Great kid. Great smile. Fabulous for the twins, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. and a beautiful night. Really oh nice goodness. night. And they, how they do, I don't even, I, well, no, that was the mojo they needed. Uh, yeah, that's what's now they're going to go on a run. I think the Astros are still losing, too, so yeah. that's good news. So that'll be two and a half. Games. Yeah. Two Thanks games. for watching. See you tomorrow. <laughs>